We've talked about the terms biotic and abiotic, biotic being living and abiotic non-living. When we talk about factors in an ecosystem, abiotic factors are the physical conditions that can control a plant um, or animal, which are the biotic community. So what we're going to look at in this module are what some of those abiotic conditions are and how can we measure them in an investment. So before we do that, the types of ecosystems that we are going to take these measurements, we have terrestrial, uh, which are our land-based ecosystems, marine, which are our salt water, so that includes the ocean, estuary, salt marshes, and mangroves, and then our freshwater, our rivers, lakes, and freshwater wetlands. So in terrestrial ecosystems, the physical conditions are those that give rise to the vegetation. Vegetation uh, produce the energy that goes through the rest of the food chain. So what we're looking at, physical characteristics of the atmosphere, of the surface, and what is within the soil. So some of those are temperature, light intensity, wind speed, particle size, slope, soil moisture, and drainage. And we'll talk about how to measure some of these factors. In a marine ecosystem, the uh, abiotic factors that we might measure are salinity, which is the amount of salt, uh, the pH, the temperature, dissolved oxygen, and wave action. In freshwater, we look at turbidity, which is the cloudiness of the water, the flow velocity, the speed at which it's moving, the pH, the temperature, and dissolved oxygen. To measure temperature, we use a thermometer. And when you're measuring um, temperature, some of the ways to control this measurement are sheltering your thermometer to make sure that wind, fill, wind chill is not a factor. And it's always a good idea to use an electronic probe. Um, they're going to make it easier to find temperature of air, water, soil, and basically you just insert the probe and you get a digital readout of your temperature. To measure wind speed, we uh, use an instrument called an anemometer. Um, you've probably seen these on top of sailboats or weather stations. They spin around. The wind captures the cup, causing it to move. Um, and what it does is it measures the rotations by, um, made by the cup. So a digital anemometer is going to be your more accurate, easiest to read. To measure humidity, we use what is called a wet dry bulb hygrometer, or more commonly known as a sling psychrometer. Um, one of the thermometers has a wet bulb, um, as you, well, I lost my picture there. Uh, but when you sling it around, here's the one that's um, dipped in water. When water evaporates, it lowers the temperature. So what we do is we look at the difference in temperatures between uh, the two thermometers, and that can help us figure out the humidity in the air. Humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. All right, to measure precipitation, we use a rain gauge. And once again, we can use um, digital or analog. Um, and it measures the depth of rain in millimeters over a certain area in a given period of time. To measure pH, uh, you've probably used pH paper or um, universal indicators. We also have uh, titration that you can use. That's probably going to be the most accurate. Uh, the quickest is an electronic pH meter or data logging pH probe. Looks similar to um, our temperature dissolved oxygen readers that you just take it, um, you insert it in your liquid and it digitally reads your pH. We also have soil test kits that um, use chemicals and indicators to indicate the pH. When we do a soil investigation later on this year, uh, we'll talk about how to use this type of test kit. Light intensity, we use a photoelectric meter. Um, it's similar to, if you've seen photographers, they have a light meter or exposure meter uh, that they use to determine how bright uh, or whether or not to use their flash. The units that we use to measure light intensity can be either wavelength, lux, or luminance. Um, this is a good idea when we're studying vegetation ecology or forest ecosystems and we want to get an idea of how much light is on the forest floor. 
Uh, to control this variable, we need to make sure that when we're taking measurements with our photoelectric meter that it's done at the same time each day because where the sun is will affect your readings. We also want to make sure there's the same atmospheric condition. If you're measuring with a cloud cover one day and clear the next, then your readings are not going to be controlled. Particle size um, refers to the texture of the soil, what size particles uh, of the mineral matter are present. So this determines how quickly a soil will drain or how well it will hold water. The larger particles uh, you can measure. You can pick up a pebble, uh, take a ruler, and find an average size. The smaller size we use sieves. Um, each sieve has a different mesh size. You dump your soil on the top, you shake it, and it separates based on sediment size. We will be using these when we do our soil lab later this year. We can also use sedimentation to separate our smaller particles. Our clay and silt sized particles are too small and will go all the way through a sieve. We'll also be practicing this method as well. Slope determines how quickly water runs off the land. Uh, we use a clinometer. You uh, can make one using a pen tube, like a ballpoint pen. Take the, the ink out and use the hollow tube. Um, attach it to a protractor with a string and a weight. Um, you would look through um, the empty pen tube and then you would read the angle off the protractor. You can use a compass and it works the same way. Salinity is the concentration of salt in water. Um, this is Salt water is conductive so we can measure the electrical conductivity or if we measure the density that can tell us uh, how much mineral matter is in the water. We measure uh, salinity in parts per thousand Seawater has 35 parts per thousand, so it's about 3.5, has a 3.5 percent salinity. Turbidity, we said was a cloudiness. Um, there is a disk that we lower into the water and as soon as um, you can no longer see the, the disk, you record the depth. Um, you do the same thing, you can drop it down and rise it up and as soon as you can see the disk you record the depth, find the average of the two and you can figure out how turbid the water is. So the lower the turbidity, the clearer the water. High turbidity is going to be more cloudy. And that's it for our abiotic factors. Um, our next module will discuss biotic factors and how we measure those.